So the Democrats are concerned, and genuinely they should be concerned. Uh, I don't believe Bernie Sanders is the one that should run against Trump. He doesn't stand a chance. And I'm not for Trump, I'm not against Trump, I'm not for Sanders, I'm not against Sanders. I'm just saying from the point of view of the Democrats, you don't want Sanders to run because once his socialist policies really kind of get off paper and people say, well, hold on, look how much the taxes are going to go up. Look what this is going to create. Uh, I believe the uh, manufacturing sector, the Midwest manufacturing sector, most definitely will be lost. Uh, I don't believe that they will vote Sanders in any way, shape, or form. We've got a, a blue-collar, what they call, they're calling a blue-collar boom going on right now, too. They're not going to want Sanders in there. Tim Ryan, he's, uh, he's declaring that if Sanders gets uh, nominated, that they're going to lose 48 states. Uh, I'm guessing probably California will be one that would stay blue. Let's see, maybe New York, maybe? California for sure would stay blue. New York, maybe. But yeah, Sanders' success ramps up concern among congressional Democrats. Some Democrats are worried that as the nominee, Sanders may hurt the party's chances of winning back the Senate and even put House seats in danger. Um, my personal opinion is absolutely they will put House seats in danger. I mean, it's happened before in the past. You know, we're going to turn the entire nation red. I'm just saying, the history has proven that. While congressional Democrats share in their party's overriding goal of defeating President Donald Trump in November, and that's their mistake. They are so focused in beating Donald Trump that they have forgotten that they need to court the American people. If you want to beat Donald Trump, you come out with, hey, I've got these policies that are going to you know, make us prosperous. Unfortunately, in 2020, the Democrats are going to have to shy away from topics of the economy because the economy is great. And yeah, I know there's some people who live in these weird echo chambers that try to tell me that the economy is horrible. What news are these people watching? The numbers don't lie. We're going through a blue-collar boom right now. I mean, good lord, man. So they have to stay away from the economy. And what's worse for the economy than anything else? A democratic socialist. That is what is it. And when people get into the, the, the policies, they're going to see it. Washington. While congressional Democrats share in their party's overriding goal of defeating President Donald Trump in November. That's a horrible statement. They're so focused on beating Donald Trump. That they have forgotten that if you want to beat him, come up with better policies. You're not trying to beat Trump. You're trying to court the American people. There is growing concern that their efforts to retain a somewhat fragile House majority and hopes of winning control of the Senate could be hampered with Bernie Sanders at the top of the ticket. It will be hampered. And hell, it's half... You're hanging on by a fingernail as it is anyways because you can only hold on to these altruistic ideas and these virtual signal ideas for so long. Virtue signal. I know, it sounds like I'm saying virtual. Virtue signal. In particular, they are concerned that having Sanders at the top of the ticket could drive away suburban voters who favored Democrats in the 2018 midterm elections in the nation's small number of closely divided districts and put potential Senate seats out of reach in GOP-leading states. Not anymore, buddy. Not anymore. Now, right now, as, as things see in my political compass is saying, you know... We're going to have uh, another 19 freaking uh, 70s, 1972, 1970s, let me think, oh my god, 1970s or 1972 or whatever it is, the entire country turned red. Uh, Anthony Brindisi is among those who won close races less than two years ago, defeating incumbent Republican Claudia Tenney in New York's 22 congressional district. My preference would be to see a more moderate candidate at the top of the ticket. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, a moderate. And we don't have a moderate. None of these people in there are moderates. Where's the moderate? 
Someone who reflects more of the districts that deliver the majority in 2018, said Brindisi, who will face Tenney in a rematch in November. And I don't think Sanders really represents that. No, no, Sanders is not moderate. He is far left. Democrats captured the House majority in 2016 by winning a net of 41 seats, including races in 31 districts the president also carried in 2016. And there are predictions that we're going to have another 1970s or 72, and I can't remember the date or the president for some reason off the top of my head. But in the early 70s, 70, 72, the entire country had turned red. Uh, and I believe it's going to happen again. I'm pretty sure it's going to happen again. In fact, there are people that are predicting Donald Trump is going to get 520 delegates, leaving only 17 delegates left. Two states. 17 delegates. That would be California and New York. Yeah, 17 delegates. That would be California and New York. That fits. Uh, and 250 to Trump. Do you know what that's going to do to the nation? It's going to paint it red. Congratulations, Democrat, you've defeated yourselves. As part of the effort to keep those seats, Democrats have put Cherry Bustos, who represents one of those 2016 Trump districts, in charge of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, which is dedicated to winning House races. While the committee has been focused on keeping those suburban swing voters and broadening the party's appeal among them, yeah, but the majority of the suburban voters are going to be moderate center center right not even center left more moderate center center right how do you appeal to them not with any of the candidates that we've got none of them while the committee has been focused on keeping those suburban swing voters and broadening the party's appeal among them many democrats fear that sanders uncompromising belief in large government programs, including Medicare for All, and a wholesale change, the economic system will hinder their efforts, especially if the nation's overall economy continues to hum along. Ding, 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 ding. Democrats need to stay away from the economy. That is not going to be your talking point right now. Also, Medicare for All, absolutely, it will take down the United States economically. History has shown that when the government gets its paws in things and the red tape happens and the government takes control of things, these things tend to go to crap. History has shown us that repeatedly. Repeatedly. And yeah, stay away from the economy, Democrats. Just stay away from the economy. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is fiercely protective of these members who chose her for the position of a position a second time and sent a signal this week that an alternative presidential candidate like former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg would be better for winning down ballot races. So they're signaling with Bloomberg who is going to wait until Super Tuesday to, I guess, come in and steal the delegates, he believes, is going to be a better bet. But at some point, no matter which way you slice it, the Democrats have got to consolidate their votes around somebody. Because if they don't, then yes, yes, Sanders is going to win. And it sounds funny talking about the Democratic Party fighting the Democratic Party. I don't know why Bernie Sanders just didn't go as an independent. I mean, I know why. Funding reasons, money reasons. He... You know, even though everybody forgets that Bernie Sanders is quite wealthy, more wealthy than probably the majority of us watching this video right now. I guarantee you that. I think that his involvement in this campaign will be a positive one, Pelosi said in a soft embrace of the one-time Republican mayor earlier this week. On Thursday, however, she dismissed claims that Democrats are jittery about the presidential race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are calm, cool, and collective. Collected, Pelosi told reporters, yes. Does your religion prevent you from feeling jitters as well? I mean, just because some people may be speaking out about not liking one candidate or another, that's the democratic way. That's politics. It's messy business. Yeah, but they're literally saying that if 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 anybody but Sanders gets elected, they're not going to vote Democrat. They're going to vote Republican. And it's the same with Biden and the same with Buttigieg. And, uh, 
you're just a mess. You're just all over the place. All over the place. And then you got AOC building basically her own super PAC for super progressive lefties. So which style of Democrat are we supposed to vote in? Democrat socialism? Progressive Democrat? Ultra-progressive Democrat? Establishment Democrat? Which, which, which Democrat? Which style of democracy? Which one? This isn't just messy business. This is a bloodbath amongst yourselves. And you're doing it to yourselves. Because you're so focused on beating Trump that you have forgotten to beat Trump, you've got to have good policy. How are you going to improve on the economy more than what Trump has? How are you going to improve on infrastructure? How are you going to improve the United States standing on a global theater? What are you going to do about trade? What are you going to do about the borders? All we ever hear is, this person can beat Trump. Okay, how? How? <sighs> Asked about concerns among Democrats on Thursday, Sanders told reporters on Capitol Hill that if Democrats are going to defeat Trump, again, quit thinking about defeating Trump. Think about the American people. It's not about Trump. It's about the American people. It's not about Trump. It's about the American people. It's about us. We are the ones who vote you in. Trump doesn't vote you in, so quit talking about beating Trump. You're going down the wrong path and you're forgetting about policy. And we want to hear what are you going to do when you get into the presidency. We don't want to hear we can beat Trump. Okay, so you say you can beat Trump. How? What do you got? What are your policies? What are you going to do with taxes? I mean, come on now. We're going to have to get young people a lot more involved in the political process and expand minority voting. And I think we have a campaign to do that. Sure, but gosh darn it, we need other people like me and other individuals on YouTube to start educating the young people about quick falling for these buzzwords like free. It ain't free. Okay? It's not free. You know, when you get in bad situations sometimes... Someone will come up who wants to uh, not have exactly the best intentions for you in mind, and they might start giving you things. Here's this thing. Don't worry about it. It's free. Here's this thing. Don't worry about it. It's free. But eventually they're going to come back and be like, hey, man, I have done this for you, and I have done that for you. Now I need you to do this. Nothing is free. Nothing is free, free, ever. Even when you win free, like lottery tickets, it's not free. You still got to pay taxes. Nothing's free. Still, it's a concern that Democratic strategist <laughs> James Carville, who advised Bill Clinton in his successful 1992 presidential campaign, has been sharing on numerous cable television appearances in recent days. What did he say? Well, he said if uh, Sanders was the nominee, basically, I'm going to vote for him, is what he said. <laughs> no bigger threat than that. The American vote, that is what we hold over the head of our politicians. I'm going to vote for him, and Democrats could retain control of the House, but 18% of the United States elects 52% of the Senate. You know what's going to change? Nothing. Bernie Sanders is president. Mitch McConnell, majority leader. The Republicans control federal courts. Come on, people. We're going to have a big election here. Even if Sanders does win, it's going to be an uphill battle for him in the White House anyway on some alternate plane where the American voter doesn't care about taxes and doesn't care about the ability to move upwards past the glass ceiling. Come on now, everyone wants to talk about a glass ceiling. You freaking get socialism, you got yourself a concrete ceiling. How do you bust through that? And you just don't want to get to the point where we are so far down the road that we can't stop, turn around, and come back if it doesn't work. And... I don't see it working. I don't see the American people opening up their wallets so willy-nilly and saying, yeah, raise our taxes. Now, I could be absolutely wrong, and I accept the fact that I could be absolutely wrong. Are you, the listener, willing to open up your wallet and pay, I don't know, 5% more in taxes every year? Are, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? And not only that, everything else taxed at a much higher rate. And not only that, you're kind of capped on what you can make a little bit, you know. Capitalism rewards merit, and it punishes bad activities. It's the best system we have. 
Those are my thoughts and my opinions, and you're free to disagree. In fact, I welcome dissenting opinions. Change my mind. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm an idiot and why I'm an idiot. I love you guys. Stay informed, and I will catch you on the next one.